Hello friends and welcome to my channel. My name is Als and today is the first ever knitting podcast episode with Als. What a creative name. that 4 p.m. crash really crushed me and I really need to pick my energy levels up so you do your thing maybe get a drink maybe get something else and we can get into this you might be wondering why is somebody starting another knitting podcast I really am in a dire need of talking to somebody about knitting because I have my suspicions, my boyfriend is not listening to me anymore. Now we cleared those reasons up, let me introduce myself. Since we have never seen each other's faces before and because I work a corporate job and I am informed by that corporate job, I thought we could start the session with a little bit of an icebreaker. We could do a little knitting facts about me, icebreaker. I will share three knitting facts about me. You can share one knitting fact about you, or as many as you'd like. I started knitting because I have a very expensive taste in things. Like, I go to a store and I browse all the sweaters and stuff and I don't like anything. I feel like either it doesn't feel very nice, the material, or the cut is a little bit awkward. Or there's just something I mind about it. So I started browsing Farfetch this one evening and I was browsing for hours because I didn't have anything better to do at that time. And then I found this beautiful, beautiful sweater by Kate. If I find it, I'm just gonna put it on the screen here. It's 100% cashmere, it's cinched in the waist, beautiful piece. And then I looked at the price tag and it was 900 euros. Can you believe that? I like I understand that they're designer brands and it's cashmere so the price tag should be higher but 900 euros is like that seems excessive right will you back me up on this I'm not willing to spend 900 euros on a sweater I am not convinced it's just worth the money so I thought that would be a dumb purchase but then I was thinking like I feel like I could do this. You're gonna come to realize through watching more of my videos, I have a habit of being overconfident and like over ambitious in things. Um, so if somebody is like, oh, this is really hard, you can't do it, etc. I'm like, no, I can do it. I'm gonna become proficient in this in a year. So at that time, it was my challenge to become proficient in knitting eventually. And I thought it was gonna take a lot shorter. I thought like two, three months. I've got it. To summarize, I started knitting because I wanted to save some cash. Little did I know at the time that yarn addiction is a real thing. My first three projects, or maybe four actually, I either frogged or I threw away. Deleted, burned, just... I didn't want to look at them. The first one is I got this yarn which was wool acrylic blend and First of all, I don't really do acrylic blends as much anymore because I just don't like the feel of my body. But I got it in this very bright pink Barbie color. And that color just isn't very me and what I wear on a daily basis. I think you probably want that first project of yours to be just really interesting, really out there because you're very excited. And I didn't think enough about the wearability factor. Apart from that, I just don't think the tension was very good, the stitches were very even, so I decided to completely frog that project. I have actually since then reused the yarn and I'm gonna show you it's one of the finished objects later on. Um, I think that turned out really nicely, but it took me a year to upcycle um, that yarn, so you know. And that wasn't a very good project, but I actually learned a lot on it. It was one of the easier sweaters. I think it was sweater from Daisy and Peace, one of the ones with like 
just like a ba very basic chunky pattern and i really do like that pattern still i think i would like to make it eventually maybe for a one year knitting anniversary or something the second project i was making i tried to make for my boyfriend and i'm gonna again try to find pictures of this stripy sweater but i didn't find a pattern that i liked for a stripy sweater especially for men so i improvised and i tried to create the pattern by myself because again i was feeling very ambitious and i knew nothing about pattern design at the time and you can probably see where this is going because everything was wrong about the dimensions like it was just too small for him on the chest and then the sleeves were a little bit long and when you put your arm like this this part was just really this part was just really hanging and it was it was this like wing effect it looked like you could fly away I ended up blocking the sweater and as you may imagine uh, since it was like a heavy mohair yarn i couldn't frog it uh, which is a big shame because i really liked the yarn and it was a bit itchy but it creates this um it creates this really nice effect but you know what i have learned from my mistakes and i will now always know to take measurements of people and really count the stitches based on the gauge and everything so it was a very good learning experience and i guess i'm one of those people who sometimes need to learn the hard way it is what it is and the third project i made the number one mistake which is just choosing curse the yarn it, i got yarn of aliexpress i didn't have a good feeling about it but i started again with stripy sweater because i had an obsession with stripy sweaters last year and i was actually intending to finish that but about a few months ago when i was reviewing my yarn stash i just decided to give it up i'm not much of a hoarder i'm one of those people like if i have something in my life that doesn't serve me it just needs to go away so that project um that work in progress went away and I'm kind of happy I don't have to look at it anymore because then it would remind me of my past mistakes and were bigger than that. And the third knitting fact about me is I am actually clinically insane and I enjoy Italian bind off. No, genuinely, like I think it's just a very nice activity. It kind of reminds me of embroidery, which I have never done. But I would imagine that's what embroidery feels like and I feel like it's just very calming to like saw the needle through the loops. If you ever need anyone to finish off your bind off on your project, feel free to call me. I'm very happy to do that for you. So now that we're done with the formalities and we've become acquainted, let's jump into the juicy part that everybody's probably looking forward to, which is the finished objects. My first finished object is the Moby sweater by Petite Mitt that I've uh, done here. This is the first time I have ever knit any sort of texture or cables. And girl, I started knitting this project about early March. Me and my partner, we went traveling and I figured there's gonna be a lot of like airplane time and travel time. So I took this project and one tip for the future, if there's one thing you take away from this video, don't go traveling with patterns that you're not so sure about or you don't know how to do the texture or read the pattern too well because you're gonna mess up. At least it's this advice I would give to my old me. It's hard. The time when I finished this project was, I think it was actually July, so it was last month. Finished it July, I blocked it beginning of this month, which is August, and I can't even wear it now because it's like 30 degrees Celsius outside still. So hopefully, I can wear this uh, very soon. Multiple reasons why this took so long. First reason being, it was just too hard of a pattern for me. It wasn't too hard to knit, but just figuring it out and to... To, I had to... 
redo a lot of parts for example at some point i have knitted most of the sleeve and then i realized i actually read the pattern wrong and instead of just doing two decreases at every stage i was just doing one so i was decreasing at half the speed and it was just too big I could have went along with it and be like embrace the imperfections, but I am I am a bit of a perfectionist in those things, and I just if I make something that I'm not hundred percent happy with, I'm just not gonna wear it. At the end of the day, I make those items for myself. I want to wear them. I want to enjoy them. Third point, and I think this is a very controversial opinion, but I don't think the pattern was particularly clear. Um, at least for a person like myself, like I have this brain that selectively reads information. I'm also the kind of person who skips reading manuals and instructions if it's too wordy. And I felt like there was just too many words in the pattern and it wasn't very clearly written. Again, at least for me, so I was like skipping to different parts and I really shouldn't have done that. I really should have followed the pattern. But it's done now, and it's beautiful, and I think Petite Knit did such an amazing job in terms of how the pattern looks. I think it's really nice. One more thing about how I knitted this. Actually, there's three hmm, accidental alterations I made to this sweater. Um, the first one would be, I don't know if it's on this side or the other side. Ooh, it's on this side you can see where these are like going over and under so some of them are going over and some of them are going under these lines and um yeah like here you can see that and um i just didn't read the pattern correctly i don't think it's awful i don't think it's noticeable at all the second one is i think the neck I made it a little too tight so it's not too stretchy here. It still goes through my head, but I do wish it was a little bit stretchier. But I'm also not annoyed at it enough to actually redo it. Third accidental alteration is still the speed at which I was decreasing for the sleeves. You hear on the sleeve that this is a little bit wonky. And this is for two reasons. One is I like the ribbing to be generally a little bit tighter, so I want it to decrease a little bit faster. But also the second thing is I am a size XS on most things, but I am on the taller side. I'm about 5'7". So the sleeves of sweaters normally end quite high up for me. I wanted to make the sleeve a little bit longer and i just didn't do too well you live and you learn about the yarn i didn't use the recommended yarn for the pattern i did hold two yarns together the first one is the we are knitters baby alpaca held with drops alpaca silk i think it's the brushed alpaca silk looking back now knowing what i know about the company maybe i would make the same choice because i like the yarn maybe i wouldn't I don't know. I think I can say though, I am generally quite happy with the baby alpaca. It's brushed kid silk alpaca. So the drops brush, the drops brushed alpaca silk. It sheds a little bit. Um, I'm generally very happy about it, but I think when you're wearing like black clothes, um, it is quite noticeable. You were wearing this sweater before that. So that's one thing to keep in mind. I haven't worn this sweater much given the time of the year so I can't really vouch for how well the yarns hold and if they're gonna pill or not, how they're gonna wash. I only have a few wears worth of this. I will report back to you maybe in a few months when I wear it a little bit more. The second and last finished item is this cardigan that i actually didn't follow a pattern for this it's a pattern i made my friend calls it the versace cardigan i saw similar patterns on instagram or similar knits uh, i don't think i've discovered many patterns for this this was a little bit inspired by free knits i think they're american based 
design company and they do have my knits I just have these things that I wanted to bring into the pattern so I can't claim full credit for this for sure I'm gonna again link your Instagram like a very fluffy cardigan the cardigan is a little bit more on the street wear side I would still wear it in that format but I think I wanted something a little bit more I don't even want to say classy because theirs is very classy just something different the construction so it's quite a simple construction I started with the back yoke then did some German short rows and increases um, and then kind of just did the shoulders and the front and later on attached the sleeves so you know the standard um, but there was a lot of Italian bind off, like a lot. I guess it's kind of related to to the third knitting fact about me, so I didn't mind very much. But as you can see, this is Italian bind off, and also the ribbing here. I didn't do it with the body. I kind of just picked up the stitches and did it, did it later. So this is Italian bind off, and then the neck ribbing was also, I think, Italian bind off, double folded edge here. And I think the absolute highlight of the sweater, remember the yarn I was talking about in one of the projects I frogged, my first ever project. I just over dyed it with some random ass dye. It's not even acid dye, I don't know what it is. I'm pretty sure it's bad for the environment. But it looks nice. And again, we're better people. We will use acid dye next time. But I just wasn't sure whether acid dye was going to work perfectly at the time because this is about 40% acrylic. I didn't know much about yarn dyeing when I did this. I'm quite happy with how it worked out considering this yarn is also held with Fico and Atelier Mohair. I think it's actually one of my top yarns because I think it works really well with most things and they have such a nice range of colors. I would just buy one of each because they are just very very satisfying to look at when you get into the yarn store and you just see the whole selection. And I really think what makes this cardigan is the buttons. The story with the buttons is I actually tried about three sets of buttons for this and I didn't like any of them um, and I stuck to these ones finally. The first set was just regular mother of pearl button they were a little too small don't think it worked too well with this kind of cardigan so i took them off and then i used these tortoise shell slightly thicker slightly chunkier slightly bigger buttons but they still weren't really doing it for me they, they weren't big enough and then i spoke to my boyfriend's mom and we were doing a little bit of brainstorming and she was saying like you know what would look really well like Chanel style button. I followed her recommendation. I got this set of random vintage buttons, um, just like a mix of 12. And I picked like two, three, four, five, six of the ones that I liked the most. And I think it worked out really nice. I think it gives it a little bit of something, you know, you don't always have to have everything uniform. First work in progress, I think it's Nina's top uh, by Le Pou. And this is uh, an item that I started knitting before summer, I think June time, and I never finished. And I don't think I ever will finish it. I did it in just some random yarn I got in a craft store. Um, it's 100% cotton, but that's one of my problems actually. I don't know if anyone experiences the same but this cotton yarn has like a very slight it's like a halo and especially when you rub it i tried rubbing this for a little bit and see i'm not sure you can see it on camera but there's like little white hairs on it and i'm just afraid that when i start wearing this top it will just get worn out really quickly and i'm not sure the extra two hours i would spend on finishing this is worth it if you have any encouraging words for me, please let me know. And if you don't, then let me know as well. That's completely on me. I made the wrong choice uh, of the yarn. The second problem is I think I chose the wrong size. It looks really tiny, doesn't it? 
And I was hoping the excess could fit me because most of the excesses fit me from any other patterns. But this really does seem quite small. Um, my gauge is correct, but I feel like the lack of stretch actually comes in this area. And here, I do think it's probably something to do with how much space I left when I was increasing. I don't think it's very flattering, so yeah, that's the second thing. I actually started working on the eye cord here. That's meant to be like a like a part of the pattern, but I'm not sure I'm gonna finish it. I think I might just like leave it like this and just look at it remind myself of the failures and bad decisions I've made. Second work in progress is the Loof Sweater by Petite Knit and it's almost finished. I'm just missing one more arm. So I do anticipate it to be finished in a couple more days. I'm not gonna talk too much about this because there's a whole video coming up. You can do this, I believe in you! And my third work in progress and the one that I'm the most excited about, really, is the sweater number 20 by my favorite things knitwear. Um, I'm almost done with, well, almost done with the body, then I need to do the ribbing, which we all know takes forever. But I think this is such a fun knit. I have already made one accidental alteration to this. When I was knitting the gauge, I did it in 5mm needles. I have accidentally started knitting this on 4mm needles. They just look very similar and I had them in the same bag. I had my suspicions when it was knitting quite tight and I guess there's quite a lot of like 3D texture. Um, so I did feel like maybe I used the wrong needles but I was somewhere here where I realized like I was on the front already. When I tried it on, to be honest, I thought it looks quite flattering it wasn't too small on me it was fitting quite well and to my understanding the pattern the smallest size is the xs sm and i'm normally an xs so if it is meant to fit an m on like 5.5 millimeter needles i feel like i'm gonna be fine especially after blocking it i think we're good here I think this is such a fun knitting experience, genuinely. Like the different types of cables, I really do enjoy knitting cables. I think it's my new favorite thing. I think it's just so satisfying and I set myself little goals of what I need to knit in an evening or an afternoon. So I tell myself I need to knit like three cables worth because you can really see the progress in like one afternoon or one evening. And for this, I use a mix of two yarns, the BC Garn Northern Lights. This is a very odd yarn to me because it has almost this like papery, cottony feel and I just wouldn't expect wool to feel like it, but I really like it. I do think it's a little bit lighter, um, which is something I like about it too. Personally, just really like the color. That's why I picked it at the time. I... And the second yarn I'm using is the Isakar Silk Mohair. I was looking for a very long time for a yarn that would color-wise fit this yarn really well. My first instinct was to go for the Drops Alpaca Silk in like a similar color and I actually got it and I got it in sweater quantity but then I realized the colors are completely off and I just didn't like the way it looked. So then I actually went physically to a yarn store I almost got the Tilia, but I also wanted to try something new because Tilia, I already know I like. I was told um, the Isagar Silk Mohair doesn't shed as much as Tilia does. Hopefully I can finish this very soon because I am genuinely just very excited to wear it. I think it's gonna be such a nice little autumn item. Yarn acquisitions.
I have recently purchased about five kilos of all sorts of undyed yarn, but I will not be talking about it in this video. I'll make a different video about it. Completely different topic. This would be like a two hour video. Let's talk about the smaller things. Remember that drops silk alpaca I was talking about in a different color is here. It's here and I will actually show you to compare. Absolute mismatch, right? Like this is more bluish, this is more reddish undertone. Didn't work. But regardless, I still think this is a beautiful color and I've got it in sweater quantity now. So I still think it would be really nice to maybe, maybe like a lace fluffy cardigan. We'll see, but I definitely kept this because I think it's very nice. Second and third yarn acquisitions that I got are these two. So this is the Tilia, I think it's in limelight. Is that a name of a color? Probably. I'm intending to hold it with this one. I am not even going to try to pronounce it. I think you can read Okologisk Somerult. I have a pattern in mind for this. I actually think I want to properly design an item that I'm later I'm going to share with you all. And yeah, I'll hold these two together for it. I'm making some swatches for it now. I don't think it's going to be anytime soon that I'm going to release it, but I'm really excited. I must say I have a newfound respect for anyone who manages to just sit down for an hour and a half and talk. If you manage to get to this point of the video, thank you very much for watching me ramble on for half an hour straight about knitting. It's been a lot of fun for me to just sit down and talk to you all. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to click the subscribe button. There are plenty of ideas that I have for this channel. I have some other formats in mind. Much love to you all and I will see you at the next one. Goodbye!